Hey, this is Tom, and in this video, we're going to look at the CAD model of the screwless vise, the machinist vise that we did for the What's in Your Box Toolmakers collaboration. Okay, I'm going to keep this pretty brief. Um, it's taken me a long time to get caught up on this one. Um, I do apologize for that, but I wanted to make sure that I got this out this week. I, I am also including in the description a link to a zip file of all the different versions that you could possibly want for these uh, for this document to include the um, the original PDFs that we used the updated drawings in uh, several different versions so if you've got CAD you should be able to uh, open this thing up and uh, muck around with it yourself I won't say that it's perfect by any means it's not I'm, I'm still working on some of the assembly stuff but uh, I talk about that. Actually, the, the rest of this video is going to be a quick walkthrough. And by quick, quick, I mean 13 minutes of me babbling about step by step how I did the drawing. Um, I did this not really to help you guys understand it, although I did. I want you to understand it. But more so that those of you who do CAD regularly can look at what I did and give me some feedback on how I can do it better. Because I'm... Um, I did not do a fabulous job on this, uh, but it's good enough. Um, I don't really like to settle for good enough. I want to do a good job. So if you guys have uh, comments, concerns, uh, tips and trip, uh, tricks for me, please let me know. I really would appreciate that. Uh, with that, enough babbling. You'll hear a whole lot more of that, but let's take a look at the video itself. Let's take a look at the drawings in Fusion 360 that we used for the What's in Your Box Toolmakers Challenge or Toolmakers Contribution. So I don't know what uh, we're calling that these days. Anyways, I'm like I said, just trying to get things wrapped up, get things fixed, uh, and uh, this is the drawing as it stands right now. Uh, rather than delay things anymore. I'm going to give it to you as is. Now the drawing it contains a few different pieces here. Uh, you know, we've got the different components, right? You've got the base component. There's the movable jaw. There's a pin that goes through. The pin holder, which you can't see because I've got some other stuff in the way. Let's turn some of this stuff off. There we go. The pin holder. The spherical washer, and then uh, we actually have this part over here, which is uh, this is a Mac McMaster car. Uh, number I just did an import from their their website right? so it's just a quarter twenty screw um, cap head screw so you can make this if you want but that's the, you know it's got the part number everything ready to go you don't have to do that this is one of the nice parts about being able to import some of these pieces um, the assembly portion is not completed uh, at this time um, so I've been working on it trying to figure it out uh, it just for whatever reason I, I'm not getting it right and this is me not knowing how to do this this is not a it's not a limitation in fusion it's I just started using fusion over the summer um, after I had my back surgery and while I was on a lot of medication right so um, it's still very new to me uh, that being said this was not difficult to draw uh, I was working from those original PDFs which are also going to be in the uh, in the files here for you and I was able to uh, to draw this fairly uh, fairly easily. So what's nice about Fusion? Let's go all the way back to the beginning, and we can step through, you know, one step at a time. I created a sketch. So actually, I need to turn my sketches on for this so you guys can see this. So I created a sketch, and then I did an extrusion. Right, the sketch was just the side view, extruded it through, and we've got the basic uh, part here. Uh, from here, I started adding some chamfers. Now, one thing, or not chamfers, uh, relief for the uh, grinding. Uh, this is one of the areas that uh, I got feedback from uh, Adam Booth and, and uh, Tom Lipton to make some changes. So if you look at this original drawing here, actually let's back up a little bit, um, and I'll turn the body off so we can look at the drawing. If we zoom in, the original print called for this to be... Uh, rounded right there's no no reason for that there, there's no good reason to have that so um he suggested uh, tom suggested that i actually uh, make all of these nice and flat so you can use a slitting saw rather than uh, maybe an end mill to do it 
So let's just keep moving through it, right? So my next step in the drawing, uh, so we added in the, uh, the cutouts. Um, now I started working on the, uh, uh, where the, the holes were going to be on the fixed jaw, right? So I'm going to start adding, adding pieces in. Uh, did the, the extrusion, or in this case, a cut, and then I threaded the holes, right? And so what's nice about uh, Fusion is it allows you to very easily do the, uh, the threading as well. So then I started working on the back side of it because now um, what that allowed me to do uh, with the back sketch is make another cutaway for uh, the area that the moving jaw was going to rest upon. This is another one of those areas, this relief in here. Uh, I had to change that. Uh, I also had to, to put a chamfer on this part of the head here because if we, let's look at it from this angle. And I, I actually put the chamfers in later uh, in, in the, uh, sorry, put the chamfers in later in, the, in the, uh, the drawing itself. But right now, there's no way for you to get a tool in there without hitting this corner. Right, so this is one of those pieces that it's, it's late in the timeline because it's something that I added after the fact. Um, I could actually come into that, uh, um, to, to that portion where I uh, made the change and drag it over you know, so that it's, it's linear. But it doesn't make sense to do that for, uh, for right now. But you can do that because I'm going uh, to make this whole file available to everyone. So if you want to go through and make changes to this drawing, you can. I'm just kind of showing the, the thought process that I went through. It's you know it's interesting going back and looking at this after the fact too because um, I probably would have drawn this differently now than I did when I did it the initial uh, drawing you know, over the summer. Um, so you know, we had the back sketch, we did the bottom sketch, did the uh, the cut through there, and this is where Adam was talking about when he was machining. The cut comes through here, but it actually stops at this. Uh, uh, it stops. In, at the uh, fixed part of the jaw here, so um, he had to be careful on how he machined that, right? Uh, so I had to add some construction lines in here to get moving through, and now I started working on the the uh, the clamp cutout, right? So um, I got that cut away, and then I repeated the process for the front. Went through. Oh, here we go. There's a play button. Just gonna walk us right through it. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, okay. There we go. Sorry, guys. Hey, that's what that means. It'll play you up to that point. So, anyways, you know, I started building that out. You know, trying to figure out what that sweep was going to be, because the original print didn't give that kind of information. All it said was it was a one. Uh, the, it had a radius. This radius here is. One inch, eighty-five thousand, um, eight hundred fifty thousandths. Yeah. That's all it says. Um, no idea why they chose that. Adam went with a different um, went with a different uh, diameter cutter based on what he had available to him. So when you guys do it, you can too, right? If you make this, make it to what make, you know, makes sense for you. It doesn't have to be exactly like this print. This print's just kind of a, a generic uh, working model for you to go with. Uh, so I started working on chamfers. You can see, I just added a bunch of chamfers around. Um, the original prints had a call out here. All the chamfers were supposed to be 50,000 at 45 degrees. Um, now I started working on more sketches. And let's zoom out a little bit so you can see what I did here. So now I started working on the movable jaw. And I probably should have done this on a different, um, in a different drawing and then linked it. But I did everything uh, in the same drawing. Um, and maybe, maybe is, is the right way to do it with para, um, parametric modeling. Uh, maybe it's not. Uh, please chime in if you've got better ways to do it. I'm more than happy to hear that. So I did the side drawing, and then I went ahead and uh, extruded that. Started doing <clears throat> different parts. Now we got to do the, the cutout here, right? So how is this going to ride on and, and move along here? Uh, again, another one of those spots where I needed to change the um, the relief for the grinding. So that was the stuff that had been holding me up, is all, um, incorporating all of those changes. And then 
you know, getting the layout correct for the um, the clamping face and the spherical washer and everything, right? Trying to make sure that I, I had the right measurements in here. Um, actually, did quite a bit of math to get this right. So, to figure out, um, <clears throat> excuse me, to figure out what the uh, diameter of this is. So this is just a cord, right? You use the you use different cords for this. Uh, so there's the drill hole, the, the through hole, and uh, it allowed me to calculate what the depth was for this particular um, for that particular cutout. Uh, again, some of this, the reason why we did the, the drawing was because uh, the uh, original prints didn't have some of the uh, measurements that the guys wanted uh, for all this. And so we just keep stepping through, adding more chamfers to all the different parts. Uh, now I started working on uh, some more um, sketches. And so I, you know, simple stuff, right? Hey, there's a pin. You see it up here now, right? Um, this body right here is the pin. All these things had to get moved around when I started doing assembly, but you know, really simple. Sketch a circle, extrude it. You have a pin. Right? Um, so I started moving things around. Uh, then I worked on the pin holder. Now the pin holder was an interesting sketch. Let me let me turn a sketch, turn a few things off so we can look at the pin holder. There we go. So that one was kind of fun. You know, I basically took a, a cross section of it and then did a revolve to uh, to make the holder. Let me turn let's turn this body off. So I started by that, right? Um, did the holder, but then it rides in that groove, so I had to actually slice off the sides and then put a hole, um, a cross hole in it, right? So I put, you drew a circle and then did the cutaway there. Uh, I also added the, the hole in the threads, right? So basically that was those steps is, you know, put the hole in there and then thread it. Uh, I'm gonna turn the body back on. At this point now, I started, uh, I brought other parts in and I started working on um, assembling some things. I started lining parts up. Uh, I did not do the greatest of jobs of this. I don't quite understand the right way to do assemblies yet. And so this one, you know, so so. I, I had to make that the spherical washer. All right, so I got that in place. And um, so I started, started working on the assemblies. So I got the washer, got it mated properly. I started mating um, different parts. Uh, and this is where I got stuck. Right, so I, oh, I added the chamfers in here. I think we had forgotten that earlier. Um, here you can just see, what if you watch closely, where I add the chamfer in here to, for the clearance for that, that cut. All right. So again, it's just the timeline of when I put the things in. Um, for some of these, I did it at the actual drawing. In other times, it was easier to do it um, in the model. And that gets us to the end. Um, so this is the, the basic drawing. Like I said, I don't have all of the assembly done in the drawing itself. Um, but rather than hold everyone else up, um, I figured it would be better just to get the changes incorporated. I'll go back and do the lessons on assembly, and I'll, I may submit a new version of this. Uh, but uh, that's what we're working on right now. Is I just got this this part of it done. I also, <clears throat> as part of that, let's get this in here. Um, you know, had made new prints here. Uh, it's letting me know that there's some changes. Some of these, you know, saying, hey, there's a radius here where there's not a radius anymore because I updated it. Um, but I've got to go through and just kind of clean up these drawings. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead right now and version this, uh, create the PDFs for the different drawings, and then um, get these drawings out to everyone. So you should use these drawings along with the original drawings. And um, if you have any suggestions or questions, just let me know. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.